So this is a 1958 Zenith. Uh, would you call it a bug eye? Maybe. I guess maybe what you'd call it. Um, I think uh, in a previous video that probably isn't released yet, or maybe it is by now. Who knows? Um, I got this and I grabbed a radio, just an all typical All American Five. We got that going. Recapped it. Um, this guy came out of a warehouse where uh, there was a ton of televisions. Um, uh, you, if you follow Shango, you probably saw on his channel, he pulled a bunch of TVs out of there. Anyways, I pulled this one out and, uh, uh, I took it down and, uh, Shango and I tested the CRT in it and it's strong, uh, very, very strong, like almost new strong, um, tons of cutoff. Uh, so uh, and and the emissions were like new level on the super max so uh it's totally worth restoring this tv uh it's you know cosmetically it's a little beat up but overall it's in really nice shape i think it's absolutely worth going through it um so it's it's going to need some capacitors if the sams is correct it's got a bunch of those elminco uh ceramic paper capacitors in it it's got some bumblebees in it so those are all going to have to go. Um, but uh, I expect that it probably works. Um, you know, it's probably going to have some deflection issues, but I, if I was a betting man, I think if I bring this up on a dim bulb and a variac, it's probably going to work. The electrolytics probably are okay in it, at least to try it out. So uh, let's plug it in and see what happens. So we'll just go for broke here and got the 100 watt light bulb in there. We're not even going to bother with the 60 and this thing, I think, is 125 watts. So uh, this is probably going to be pretty bright. But, um, uh, you know, we're going to give it a shot, right? It's a series string set, by the way, too. So I'm not too worried about blowing anything up. Uh, pull this out here. That should be the power switch. And let's bring it up. Let's see if we get anything out of it. I do see a little bit of light in there. It's a little hard with these yellow bulbs. It's just what I have. It's getting warm. We'll let it sit there for a second. We're going to be nice to this thing. I think uh, I think it, we owe it to it. I shouldn't just brute force, you know, turn the juice on full bore. No audio out of the speaker yet. This 100 watt light bulb just might be too small though. It's getting pretty warm. I might have to find a like 150 watt light bulb. Yeah, that thing's burning pretty bright. Oh, I hear horizontal, high voltage. Definitely. No activity. This uh, 100 watt bulb's probably just not enough. Let's give it, let's turn it up. nothing yeah i'm gonna have to go find another light bulb well i thought i had a 150 watt light bulb but i don't so it wasn't shorted nothing is shorted so i'll just bring it up slow on the very act we'll just leave the we'll just leave the light bulb out of it as much as i would like to Get up about 70, 80 volts there and see what happens. As much as I'd like to have a light bulb in it, I don't. Totally quiet now. I wonder what happened. Switch it back to the light bulb. Let's see if we still have current flow. Yeah. Well, light bulb is on. Let's tie it up. It's getting dimmer, so 
That's interesting. It's nothing shorted. If it was shorted, this thing would be on full smack, and it's not. Wonder if something failed, because I heard horizontal before. Oh, there it is. I hear it now. The bulb got brighter, so. Okay. Let's do this. Maybe I just didn't give it enough voltage. That's full. So why was it working on the light bulb and it's not working now? Never seen that before. Put it on a dim bulb, you get horizontal. Plug it, plug it in straight into the variac and turn the voltage up and you get nothing. All right, so yeah, there's some funkiness going on and it's probably bad components, I would imagine. It's been sitting for, we have no idea how long, 30, 40 years maybe. Um, it sounded like, there, I heard the horizontal, which means there might have been high voltage. Um, don't know if it was the right frequency or not. Uh, don't know if we had filament or not. I, I would imagine so. It's a series string set, and I think, as far as I know, I have to take a look at this, but I think that the picture tube uh, filament is part of the series string. Um, so what I'd like to do is power it up. We'll check high voltage. We'll see if we get filament. Uh, I didn't have the back off of it before, so um, now I can actually see what's going on. So I hear the horizontal, but there's no high voltage. And I don't my eyes may be deceiving me here, but I need to check. I don't think we have tube filaments, which is probably dirty tube sockets. So it's interesting that I hear high, I hear something, and it's definitely horizontal because it changes when I play with the horizontal control. You probably can't hear it. So that must mean the horizontal oscillator is running, but how could that be? It's a series string set, and I'm not seeing filaments but it's pretty bright in here but i would expect to see some of these tube filaments and i'm just not seeing them but it's a series string set so i i need to print out the sams i've got it take a look at this so i just did some checking out on my chinese uh variac and this outlet is bad that explains what was going on there so let's power it up uh let's see we're bypassed. We're not going through the bulb anymore because I don't have a bigger bulb. I wish I did, but let's bring it up right about there. And uh, what happened was I realized I plugged it in here and realized that uh, I wasn't getting any tube filaments. All right, bringing it up slowly. It's about... 80, 90 volts right there. I hear horizontal. And that was high voltage. I bet that the aqua dag is cracked. That's it sucking the aqua dag back. So let's see, we're at about 90 volts. What do we got? Oh, oops, something just shorted. Maybe. Huh? Oh, we got a raster. Looks like shit, but it's a raster. No audio. And that's interesting. Changing the volume causes the. That's interesting. I wonder what that's all about. Bad capacitors. Let's see. That's horizontal rolling. see but hey we got something we have horizontal and vertical deflection pretty crappy but well let's see 
turn it up a little bit. Let's see if that improves things. Yeah, it gets a little bit more deflection. Well, that's very promising. I wonder what popped back here. I wonder if that was just high voltage shorting to some spider webs or something. Let's get in here. And... Oh, yeah. 12,000 volts. That's spot on. Spot on. That's great. Yeah, something's... There's some stuff that's shorting in here. I don't know what that's all about. That could be dirt, high voltage, uh, arcing across some dirt. I don't want to run it too long, though, because I don't want to destroy anything. I mean, this is a really nice TV, and the CRT in it's really good. Um, let's see, brightness, maybe. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Excellent. Okay. Well... The audio doesn't work, and I don't know what's up with that. And I don't know why turning the audio control is causing this to go loopy, but we'll figure that out. Not a big deal. But we got a raster. So I was uh, thinking about grabbing the signal generator and starting to troubleshoot this uh, weird thing with the audio. And I noticed this. This is very interesting. This is some kind of a botched up repair and i'm hoping that the audio output transformer is good now that i'm looking at this um that could be could be like a shorted audio output transformer so i guess what i could do is check the secondary on it i suppose let's do that so the secondary which i'm sure is not the problem is 276k so it's good the uh, primary is probably if it was going to have an issue, it's probably going to be in the primary. So I'm going to have to open this chassis up. There's really no other, really no other option here. So you can separate it here. The SAMS actually tells you how to take it apart. You separate it here and you can actually take the chassis off the bottom as well. But I think we'll start by taking the top out, which is going to involve taking the knobs off which i also want to pull the glass out so i can clean it this is glass it's not plastic this cover so let's get that uh let's get it apart all right well here's where we're at obviously i pulled the chassis out pulled the speaker out that's part of pulling the chassis out pulled the tuner out scratched my head for about 30 seconds as to why i wasn't getting tube filaments and uh at, well, I actually, it worked at first. And I had a raster and then I unplugged this to put the IF directly in it. I lost tube filaments and it dawned on me. That's where this was getting its ground. So I'd put, put a, uh, a jumper in there. Anyways, um, hooked up the VG91, tried going through the tuner, didn't get anything. I'm going right into the IF and I'm not getting anything either. I got no sound. I got no video. I can get the vertical to lock. And I think the horizontal, it sounds like I have it at the right the frequency is close enough, but I'm getting absolutely nothing. Um, there's a 4BZ6 here, here, and this. Somebody put a 3BZ6 in here, but obviously it's working. Uh, if it wasn't series string set, uh, you know, that would be suspect. Uh, but I'm getting nothing at all. So there's something's open somewhere in this circuit. So we need to take a look here. I've got the schematic, but I only got eight, eight and a half by 11. Something in this circuit here where the between the video output potentially after the video output too but we could probably test that we could probably feed right in here into the video output um, and test it test that side of it but i'm pretty certain something's probably open in this circuit here so i'm going to take a look here for a few minutes and see if there's a cap that's open or something like that. A potent, potentially there's a cap open or something like that in here that's preventing this circuit from working. But I suspect the tuner is probably okay. I thought, I figured, oh, I'll just feed directly into the IF and it'll give me, you know, something. The problem's probably in the tuner. But there's, you know, notice there's no activity. Um, but yeah, nothing. I'm feeding right in here, right here. And I got nothing, so... 470 millimicrofarads, I, probably not. That's probably a disc cap. Um, but it could be anything along here. So i got to start looking at this whole circuit right here. 
and uh, see if I can f uh, find something that might be suspect along here. All right, well, it's hard to see because I've got a mirror, a really crappy mirror right there. And uh, you can see that's our first image. Now, I'm feeding video directly through a cap from the VG91. Um, I can't get it to work through the IF. It just, uh, there's something wrong in that circuit, and I'm, I need to spend more time troubleshooting it. But I wanted to make sure that there wasn't a problem. So what I might do is kind of step my way back to this circuit. We know that we're good from this point forward, though. So feeding it into the video tube, that would be a video output tube. So something back behind test point B, which is where I'm hooked in right now, somewhere back behind here is a problem. So we're just doing the audio test here. So you guys have seen me do this before. This is a Shango trick. Uh, I got the speaker in series here. I got the chassis on one side here. Um, actually, uh, let's see. Yeah, well, let's, we'll do this one. So, so these are like 100 and 150. So sounds good. Lots of highs. Filters off a little bass. Same thing there. Sounds pretty good. That's that's good. That's probably a little bit lower value. I think it's a 140, a 140 and 100 or something like that. But in general, this all sounds pretty good. If we come down here to this guy, dead. Totally dead. See if I go to the chassis. All three sections in this one are gone. So this is part of the problem. This will definitely cause all kinds of weird symptoms. And then this, this is a boost filter. And that sounds right. Lots of highs, no lows. That must be a relatively low value. I have to look at the schematic. And if it's the one I think it is, it's 140. I would think it would sound more bassy than that. But lots of highs, so it's not dead. But super high ESR here. This one's just dead. So if we look at uh, C3 here, um, we'll notice that it's in the audio circuit. That probably explains, because two sections are on this same tube, on the audio output tube, that probably explains why there's no audio. So I'm probably going to bridge some capacitors in for now. I ordered everything for this. I ordered resistors and caps, um, but... Um, uh, for now, just to make it work, uh, let me see what I've got. These are higher voltage caps. I may or may not have them. It's probably not the issue with the IF. I need to take a closer look at it and see if C3, if one of those sections is in here. But it wouldn't. It probably wouldn't make it not work, period. I think in the audio, though, it might, based on where these are, it might make this tube not work at all. All right, so this is absolutely the wrong way to fix this. This isn't even a fix. This is just for testing. I've... I've just kind of tacked in three caps because all three sections were bad, and these are all over value, but that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything, especially since this is past the resistors in the in the uh, selenium rectifier, so it's not like it's going to blow them up or anything. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, this, like I said, is just a test. Um, when we do go to replace these and I get the appropriate ones in, we'll restuff the can probably. Um, they're going to be a little bit smaller because the values are lower than this. And the, these the, these are like 450 volt caps because I need like 400 and, and 450 or I need 400 and 300 or 350 or something like that. So they'd be a little bit smaller. I might put them on the bottom in that case. I'm bridging the old cap. It doesn't matter for this. This is just for test. Uh, I don't remember where I left off, but I got it working bitching, except for the IF. I cannot get the IF working, but this image, it's working beautiful. And that, that line across, it's actually my LED strip under here reflecting in the mirror. It's not the, it's not the tube. Um, I can't get in here to get a real good shot of it, but this thing's got an awesome tube in it. it, it the, this is the brightness, like, almost all the way down. That's the brightness down. That's it. When I crank it up, look how bright that thing is. This is, that's the brightness all the way down. So 
that's just barely turned up right there and it's really it's perfect so but uh, i i man i have been through this circuit just backwards forwards and upside down and i cannot figure out short of pulling the coils and checking the coils to see if they're the issue um in the if uh, it's just all the resistances everything you know all the numbers are right it looks good uh so i don't I don't know. I'm kind of need to take a break from this thing for a little bit. I mean, I'm very pleased with the rest of it though. I've gone through and replaced, there was, um, this particular capacitor right here in the vertical circuit was very, very leaky and it was causing the vertical to be unstable as it ran. The capacitors were failing, which I would expect. Um, and I had it on checking voltages and stuff in the IF and it just, it, it, it quit working. <laughs> so I've gone through and replaced the caps that needed to be replaced. There was a little horizontal instability. So I did change this cap on the horizontal, uh, oscillator tank circuit. And, uh, that is uh, working correctly now. So very pleased with the picture, but there's no audio and there's no IF there's, there's something I'm missing. I just haven't figured it out yet. Well, I think we found our no audio issue. This is somebody's botched repair job right here it's pretty special started checking the i checked the primary of the audio output transformer and check the voltages everything looked perfect on the 6aq5 so i said and i remember i checked the speaker coil but i couldn't remember if i checked the secondary on this transformer and when i went to check it it was open and i thought well maybe they screwed this up yeah look at how bad that is so let's do that right and strip it back and solder it put some nice uh, heat shrink tubing on it huh much better. So that was definitely open. So I expect at least to hear some hum from the speaker. And then I might inject um, into the center of the volume control. I might inject some, you know, one kilohertz tone from the VG91 just as a test. Let's flip this on and see what blows up this time. Hey, we got buzz now. So, um, let me see if I got my dealy whacker here. Yeah, I do. I've got this set up. Let me hang on a second. All right. So now this is aiding and troubleshooting us. Um, I've got a better idea what's going on now. So the IF is getting through because I've still got the IF hooked up here. That gives me my ground for the video signal. And I now have tone. Not much. I got it cranked right now. That's that's the volume all the way up. I'm getting tone through, but it's slowly failing. So that's got to be a bad capacitor. Has to be. I completely lost tone. And I had it, it was actually relatively loud when I first turned it on. So that's a capacitor that's bad, but I'm not getting any image through. So we know that the IF is poking through. It's got to be, but it's there for some reason, there's no video carrier in it. Um, so I need to take another look at the schematic now that I got a better idea of what's going on here. But at least we got audio going. So now the question becomes, have I been fighting a bad tube socket this whole time? Check this out. Look at it, it's almost coming through. Is it a bad tube? Well, no, it's not doing it. Of course, as soon as I grab the camera, it's not working. It's something in this tube socket right here, though. I'm getting audio and I'm almost getting video out of it. It could be this tube. So maybe we'll test that guy, but definitely moving this around was giving me some audio. All right, well, I kicked myself in the ass for this. I was talking to Shango, and he says, you've got a shorted IF tube. And I said, I tested the tubes. I know that doesn't mean much, but anyways, I swapped around. I just swapped two of them around, and I'm getting something through now. We've got um, audio carrier coming through. And uh, there is an image here, although you can't really see it. It's rolling, um, but it's uh, it's there. It's there. It's just really weak. So we 
need to get some four BZ sixes. Um, one of them, I, one of them is a three BZ six. Somebody substituted it. It's probably the one that's bad. Maybe I'll take the tubes out and I'll bang on them and see if I can get this to clear up a little bit. So I've uh, just kind of been working on this thing on and off as I've had time in the evenings for the last day or two. And the IF has been kind of frustrating. And uh, I was thinking about it last night. And uh, I said, you know, I should try and in just inject the IF signal in between the stages of the IF. You know, you'd think that would have come to me sooner, but it didn't. Um, so this is going into the third IF. Um, I have previously gone into the video tube. Obviously, I had the video output directly from the VG91 into the video tube, and that was working perfectly. Um, I'm th in the third stage right now. You can see it looks pretty good. That's how it should look. As soon as I go to the second stage, it looks very weak. So there's something wrong in stage two. I've already swapped the tubes between three and two, and it makes no difference. So it's not the tube. Um, there's some component in the second stage of the IF that's bad. So let's switch it over here. So we're on pin one. We're going to switch this over here to pin one on stage two or IF two. And you can see, I can probably get it to stop rolling, but you see how much weaker it looks. It'll lock probably, yeah, barely. Doesn't really want to because it's so weak. <clears throat> so, yeah, there you have it. So some component in stage two is bad. And I've been through every resistor and every single thing in here, but obviously I'm missing something somewhere that could be one of these capacitors is incorrect here. It's quite possible. And this stage two is the one that's supposed to have two 1,000 uh, picofarad caps in it. And it doesn't, and I did try and substitute those and it didn't make a difference before. So I don't think that that's it. Um, it's got what looks like an integrator, but it's not. It's, so I think we've traced it down to something in the first IF feeding into the second IF. What's happening is the pin one, which is the grid, I think grid one for uh, the second IF tube is biasing off hard, like negative 40 volts and and it happens over time you'll see it here so it should be minus 1.5 volts so let's flip it on and i'm just hooked on i've desoldered the coil going into grid one this is coming out of the if so let's get it fired up here and you'll see this will come it might come down it did last time it's very inconsistent and i've tried all kinds of stuff i've tried freezing components because it seems to be heat related when it's cold it seems to work so let's see yeah it's at minus 53 50 so it's going to go down and then it goes back up if i connect this here see it's at 18 19 so see how it slowly climbs that's with it connected to the grid See, it's just slowly climbing up, and as it climbs up, it's just turning that tube off. So something, and that climbing is happening here, so it's disconnected now. See how it's floating up? It's, and it's inconsistent. That's what's weird. I wonder if I swap the, maybe I swap the tube... See, I don't think it's a tube, though. But maybe I put the first IF and the second and swap those back and see if we see the same thing here. I tried last night. I had a uh, 6BZ6, not a 4, so the emissions would be a little bit low, but it still would work. And it made no difference. I substituted all the tubes last night and nothing. But something's biasing this off super hard over here so now i'm trying to remember where i left off here um, but that's not really important it's been a few weeks since i've touched this thing with the holidays and everything um so let me tell you where we're at uh, i've obviously if you look at this i've finished uh, recapping it um nothing really to see there you know i just got my order in from digikey and um 
I uh, put the appropriate electrolytics in here. I took out the temp ones that I tacked in. And yeah, I'm just going to leave them in there. Uh, unless that, that cap shorts well and it shorts, you know, oh well, it'll blow up the rectifier or something. I am going to add a fuse in here. I'll probably put it um, here potentially. I think that'll fit in the cabinet. Um, and uh, I'll put it like a one and a half amp fuse in here. Um, on to the issue with the IF. So uh, I did get uh, uh, four BZ6 tubes in. Um, I replaced uh, all three of them, or I've substituted all three of them. Of course, the three BZ6 that was in there was causing issues. Um, the IF works better, as I would expect, with the proper tube in there, and it's got emissions that are appropriate. Um, but it's still not right. I'm having to crank two to five volts into the IF, and it should work at like, you know, 50 millivolts or something like that. Um, started tracing the issue, the source voltage for the uh, IF. Um, and this should be about 15 volts on pin uh, number one right here on the first IF. And I was measuring, and it's kind of been all over the place. It was At one point, it was minus 109. Well, I started tracing that back, and it goes through a 470K. And the 90 volt source is what supplies that voltage and it goes through 1.5 meg. And I trace that all the way back to the sink tube. Um, uh, and at the suggestion of Shango, um, he's, you know, he said, just, you know, measure it. And when it's negative, he said, yank the tube out and see if it goes positive. Well, it did. Um, so I assume that that tube was bad. And, uh, so I thought, well, you know, I'll, um, you know, I'll bang on this tube a little bit. And, you know, wouldn't you know it if the glass was defective and it just, uh, you know, it just went on me. So now we're waiting on a 4BU8, which is an oddball tube. Shango doesn't have one in his collection, which was kind of surprising, so I had to order it. Um, so I'm just waiting on that. Once we get that, I'm suspecting that that's the issue because the plate voltage went, you know, positive 40 or something uh, when I unplugged this tube. And I got snow briefly on... The screen which tells me that uh it's working correctly um aside from whatever's going on to pull that all the way negative now what i don't understand is how it could be that negative i haven't figured that out yet i've stared and stared and stared at this this circuit and i don't understand how it could be so negative but it is so we'll change the tube and you know stranger things have happened and if that's not it then you know we're just gonna have to dig into that a little bit more and 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 see what else could possibly cause it to go that far negative. So the elusive 4BU8, 4GS8 uh, tubes, I bought four of them on eBay. Uh, elusive tubes arrived. Uh, according to Shango, these are a really weird tube, and he did not have any. Um, but I did get them online. All right, I think we got everything hooked up here. Tuner, EFC here, speaker. Yeah, I think we're good. We'll see if that one and a half amp fuse blows. This thing's rated at one and a quarter. I don't know if the inrush is going to be too much. I don't know. We'll see. We're not even going to do. Well, it's already plugged into a dim bulb. So, and I've done some work to it. So let's see if anything goes crazy. It's not going to work with a hundred watt light bulb, but. Let's make sure we're good. We're going 110 volts. And the bulb came up and is getting dimmer. So that means that we have filaments. So that's always a good thing. Let's see what happens. The bulb should get brighter here. It is. It's getting brighter. It's a little hard to tell in the video. It's not going to be enough current, though. All right. Full voltage. Really, I've had it on so many times. Okay, so we have a blank raster, so that's good. Let's hook it up to a signal and see what we get. Okay, I'm confused. Same problem. This is what happens if I pull the sink tube out. Look at that. 
no sync, but it's nice and bright. You get the signal coming through. All right, so I've been staring at the schematic here for a little bit. I've, I've determined that there really isn't a problem with the plate voltage. I think it's because uh, pin six on the sync tube. Uh, I think that it's probably not getting the signal from there. I asked Shango about it. He said, check the blanking pulse. So that's what that is. And it's part of the AGC. And I started looking and I said, well, I haven't checked these resistors yet. And um, so I got to looking at this and there's uh, this 220K right here. Sorry, it's a little shaky. Um, I said, well, let me go through and check. So I checked the pot. The pot looks like it's good. The values are a little bit low on it though, but not massively. So let's look at that 220K. That's that 220K right now. And I don't know that that's enough to make a difference, but you know, it's like tripled in value. So let's, um, I've already got the decade box out. I think maybe what we ought to do is experiment with this. What we'll do is we'll just take the decade box and we're just gonna go across Take the decade box and we'll just go across this resistor right now and now let's dial this that's interesting it went up to one meg with the decade box turned all the way down oh <laughs> i moved the never mind my fault i moved the uh there okay uh, so it's showing shorted which it should so let's dial it up 100k at a time and get this thing back to where it's supposed to be so there's a hundred and what was it, seven hundred and ninety or eight eight hundred k in parallel. That's what you get. Two, three hundred thousand. That's close. Two oh three. Eight. I'm going ten at a time. Two twelve. Two sixteen. Two twenty. Look at that. I got it right on. So, um, let's see if that. Uh, helps the situation because if that resistance is too high, you're not going to get the pulse out of the horizontal output, the horizontal uh, multi uh, horizontal oscillator. Jeez, boy, I can't talk as usual. Um, that's pretty important right there. So let's switch this over. Let's see what the drop across it is uh, when we fire it up. Uh, let me get the signal on it and see if this makes a difference. Okay, you got the VG91 hooked up, we're here, we're going to check voltage across, drop across this resistor here. Uh, let's fire it up and take a look and see if we get anything here. So 21 volts drop across the resistor. Ah, uh, would you look at that? <laughs> it's that resistor. And look at that. It's stable, too. I didn't have to touch the horizontal hold or anything. It's locked in. Okay. <laughs> okay, hang on a second here. Let me disconnect this decade box. There you go. Dead. And the drop is 34 volts. So let's hook it back up. 20 volt. Boy, it's not, it isn't a huge difference, is it? But that made all the difference in the world. Let's see, let's dial. I got this thing cranked at like five volts. Let me turn this down. Uh, yep, I couldn't even break through this thing before. That's it all the way down, and look at that. I've got it down at, at what's that, 50, uh, what's it, 0.5 microvolts, so at 50 millivolts. Is that right? Well, anyways, look at that. That is, it's nice and clear and looks perfect. It's a bad resistor. So let's change this resistor. We need to put a 220 in here. This guy is bad. All right. So we have replaced the resistor with uh, an appropriate replacement, 220K. Um, these carbon comp resistors, I've seen these ones before. I think it's a carbon comp resistor, but these are the ones that have more of a rough texture on them and they're rounded on the ends. They're not squared off like these are. Um, 
I've run into these in radios before. These things are always bad. Um, so I think that, you know, that's probably par for the course, I guess, with these. I don't see too many of them that look like this in there, but I don't know what these are. I don't know if they're not carbon comp, if they're some other kind of thing, some other kind of material. They, they definitely look different, though. They have more of like a plastic texture to them or something, but I'm sure they're not plastic. But yeah, this guy is bad. It's testing at 700K. So in theory, this thing should just work. I've still got it plugged into the tuner, so we should just get snow. Uh, well, actually, we turn this on. Uh, we're going through the tuner now. Channel 3. I had already set it up uh, before. It sounds like we're getting through. Uh, now this is probably off because the resistor is a little bit different value. Let's see. I might need to play with the AGC here. Let's see. AGC. Okay, it's AGC down. AGC up. Okay, I'm probably going to have to play with the horizontal hold course control, which this has on it. Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can't tweak that. Let's see. Where is it back here? Let's see. There's horizontal hold course. Let's get my little screwdriver on here. There it is. See, it was pretty far off, so let's go the other direction and then turn this. There we go. So now this is more centered. Perfect. Yeah, it's kind of nice that it has that. You don't have to tweak the horizontal oscillator coil on this thing because it's got that course control in there. Um, so, yeah, this looks halfway decent. Let's see. It's vertical. And I probably need to readjust the AGC now. Let's see, this is the AGC. Boy, that's sensitive. I know the camera blanks it a little bit. That is one sensitive circuit, I'll tell you. Let's take a look and see what the voltages are now with the appropriate resistor in there. I might need to change, adjust the vertical linearity and stuff. Let's see. Window circle. Actually, it looks pretty good. You can kind of get the horizontal to adjust here. Just playing with the horizontal hold. It looks pretty decent. That's going through the tuner. That's not the IF. So I see there's a little bit of ghosting right here. That might be um, fine tuning. Yeah. Oh, the other thing you got to do on this, this thing turns the interlace on automatically. That makes it a little bit jittery. There. That looks nice. That looks very, very nice, as a matter of fact. So I know it's not syncing perfectly. You got a blanking line here, but um, I'd say this thing's ready to rock and roll now. Let's um, let's watch some TV. Sorry for the content, but it's free. Um, you can't see it in the video, I don't think, but the amplitude of the audio is affecting the picture, and I got to figure that out. Something is. Something's weird there. Something is not right. I don't think you can see it. But, yeah, as he talks, it's making the picture go kind of kooky. So uh, that could be any number of things. I guess it could be a bad tube. It could be a voltage dip. Um, you know, th there's a potential for that, I suppose, is th if the voltage is, is fluctuating a lot. Um, that could be... Um, selenium rectifier low b plus i don't think so i checked all that and i think it's all good but i don't know that's going to be a fun one to have to dig into but it's it's definitely weird but the picture on this thing is just absolutely incredible i mean what a great picture 
super sharp. Okay, never mind. That was my fault. Um, that I was over modulating the audio out of the BT uh, uh, modulator, which I had everything cranked up by because I was using it as a transmitter for Halloween, and uh, it's plugged directly into this thing. This is I've got the video modulation, or excuse me, the RF modulation. It's turned all the way down. Um, so this thing is very sensitive, nice sensitive tuner now, whereas before, you know, <laughs> one resistor, it just, I had to crank it to get this thing to, 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 to break through the IF even on it. I, this thing's working really, really, really well now. And what a picture for a black and white. Ah, uh, this is appropriate, uh, material for this television. This would have been on live, uh, well... I Love Lucy was ending right around the time that this television was made, but I'm sure it's aired it. I'm sure it's received it many times in its life. Looks good. Great picture. Well, here it is back in the cabinet. Clean the glass, you know, put it all back together. And uh, it's a really neat set. So let's recap uh, what we troubleshot and what we found just to kind of summarize it because this video kind of dragged on over the course of several days so really the diagnosis started with um you know no static coming out of the tuner so i tried to go into the if right here nothing getting through the if very little getting through it um we discovered they had one wrong tube in here we had a 3bz6 instead of a 4bz6 so that was one problem um, i did find one resistor that was wrong in the first if right here um thought that, that was the issue wasn't the issue uh we diagnosed that uh we didn't have 15 volts here it was anywhere between negative 100 and and negative 80 should be 15 volts um we had direct video so we knew our video tube was good obviously that issue was it right here um followed that down started checking uh started checking all the components in this circuit right here uh, this 470k was good and I, I kept hanging up in this area right here i don't know why i should have just come down because if you follow this down here it is right here uh, let's see 15 volt comes off here comes through here comes down point d follow point d um why am i not seeing it now see this is why i didn't see it the first time oh excuse me the where we are right here coming off of the horizontal output dude let's go this direction this is the this is the pulse right this is the sinking pulse um yeah this was correct so you come right here i didn't have 15 volts at the sink tube I thought it was a bad sink tube i broke the tube banging on it thinking maybe the tube was shorted um nope that wasn't it had to wait for a new tube put the new tube in same result um, then that led me to, well, maybe I don't have the voltage here because I don't have the pulse coming through the grid right here. Um, and that's exactly what it was. Check the AGC pod. It's good. Got down here to R85, I think that is. And that's a 220K and it was eight, anywhere between seven and 800K. That was the problem right there. We weren't getting this pulse through this resistor here to, um, to uh, uh, oscillate this tube so that's why this voltage was so far negative so once we got that rolling right there we just put a decade box across this to check it got it to the right value and boom we were off and running so you know pretty simple problem but dang you know i threw me for a loop and i worked on it a half an hour here there you know over the holidays and uh, i didn't really sit down and focus on it too long until so i sat down one night and started really looking at this schematic not near the tv just kind of sitting in my chair and really analyze this you know some there's so much going on in here sometimes even though this is relatively simple for a tv um there's so much going on in here that uh you, you have to really sit down and trace it out and i did it on the computer where i could make it bigger and see it but one resistor it's all it takes and it's not close to where you think that the problem is you know you think weak if there's a bad if transformer or something like that and that's not it at all it's just the we weren't um we weren't running the sink tube appropriate content for an appropriate television so we'll go ahead and wrap this one up
Looks good.